the Maitland John Doe, 1996. Maitland, New South Wales, Australia. Shout out to Four Wing Sweepa, who's been here since the beginning and been very supportive, like so many of you, so thank you. And in this case, he asked me to find some Australian cases, and I did. In this case, the Maitland John Doe is described as being located on April 27, 1996, in Maitland, New South Wales, Australia. But it doesn't specifically specify where he was found or how that came about. They do state that he was likely to have passed during winter of 1995, which in Australia is June through August, but it could have happened the previous winter of 1994. He had long, wavy, ginger-colored hair, beard, and eyebrows. He was described as wearing an olive green, sloppy joe over a black jumper with a pocket on the front of the vest. He also had on olive green tracksuit pants over the top of green Amco jeans with an 84 centimeter waist. So there seems to be three layers of pants. I imagine this points to him not having a home. I did also need to look up the sloppy joe. So for those of us in America, it appears similar to overalls. It also appears in Australia what they call a jumper is what we refer to as a sweatshirt. It's estimated he was 28 to 45. So factoring in his postmortem interval of up to two years, that would mean his family is missing someone who was born from 1949 to 1967. He was around 169 to 177 centimeters. That would mean he was around 5'6 to 5'10. The Maitland John Doe has gone unidentified for 27 years. The St. Kilda Jane Doe, also known as Unknown Female 443, Melbourne, Australia. St. Kilda is in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, and is located within the city of Port Phillip. It's about 6 kilometers or 4 miles from Melbourne. I had trouble finding the population in 1961, but it appears it was between 15,000 and 17,000 people. So it's not huge, but not super small either. This woman was found in 1961 next to the train tracks. What is so odd about this case is that it lists her age as 55, but no range. So they don't know who she was or even her name. So I'm not sure why they settled on one age only. I don't think I've seen that before. But if she was 55 and this was true, this would mean she was born in 1906, as she's been unidentified for 62 years so far. But I don't see anything that means that could be taken as a concrete fact. They do know she was 5'8", 173 centimeters tall. She had a slim build, no scars, and no tattoos. But she did have full upper and lower dentures, which was not uncommon for the time. It's believed she passed due to natural causes, although it's a little sketchy as to what the actual cause itself was. They did note she had a really high concentration of alcohol in her blood. That, and given where she was found, it's possible she had no home. That said, she was dressed up in a black skirt and a red and white blouse, as well as a red cardigan and a dark gray overcoat, as well as black dress shoes. So to me, that doesn't fully read as homeless. It's also odd to have someone who was dressed up and was probably out at a public event to not be identified or maybe reported missing. So it's really important that anyone who has any idea who she might be call Crime Stoppers at the number given. The St. Kilda Jane Doe has gone unidentified for 62 years. If you are at all interested in helping crowdfund John and Jane Doe cases, I've provided links to the DNA Doe Project and DNA Solves below. Both of those allow you to pick the cases you help fund. The Penrose John Doe, Penrose, New South Wales, Australia. On February 21, 1997, a man and a woman stopped at a public rest area in the southern area of the Hume Highway at Penrose. It was here that they noticed what appeared to be a person in Paddy's River. When authorities arrived, it turned out that it was an unclothed male and someone had tried to weigh him down unsuccessfully. The top portion of him, however, was missing. 
They did actually find the missing portion of him later in a shopping bag at Salt Pan Creek. And both parts were found almost around the same time. I'm not quite sure how far apart the parts were found, but it looks like it's about 123 kilometers or 76 miles. So a pretty good stretch. They did later compare the DNA to confirm that both parts were from the same person. There was an inquest two years later, and they reached out to other parts of the world even trying to locate his name, but it did no good. The COD was determined to be asphyxiation, and they believe this happened in the same month that he was found. His dental records suggest he may not have grown up in Australia, which is why they reached out wider in hopes of identifying him. DNA phenotyping showed he was Caucasian, and they determined he was 180 centimeters or around 5 foot 9. He weighed 86 kilograms, which is around 190 pounds. They believed him to be between 30 and 40 years old, and that would mean he was likely born between 1957 and 1967. At one time, there was a huge reward of $500,000 for information leading to identification of either him or the person responsible for taking his life. I can't say, however, if it's still valid. Often it's pledged money and the pledge expires, but I can't confirm it one way or the other. It looks like the reward stems from the 25th year of unidentification in 2022, so it might still be good. That's honestly the largest reward I've ever seen, so kudos to Australia. They issued a plaster recreation, which they used as a basis to create a computer recreation. They also issued a photo of his tattoo, which is very distinct and is clearly a letter A. This case has an alert on some sites saying there is a postmortem photo, so if anyone goes to look, just a heads up, it's only a photo of the tattoo, which is the same one I have shown here, although my copy removes the background, so it's not disrespectful to the person or to the viewer. The police thought the tattoo may have indicated a gang or some other specific meaning, but they couldn't ever pin anything down. Detective Superintendent Doherty commented that it's unusual for such a large reward for a case, but he would go on to explain that the police had exhausted all other leads and are desperate for information. If you know anything, please call the number on the screen. The Penrose John Doe has gone unidentified for 26 years. Huge thanks for watching all the way to the end. And a big thanks to all of you who consistently like and comment on the videos. Whether you leave a full comment or an emoji, it makes a huge difference. The whole dance with YouTube is hard sometimes. I gain only about 350 subs a month. So if you consistently watch my videos, maybe take a moment to subscribe. It's a huge push toward the videos being suggested to new people. The next goal is 20,000. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves and each other.